One of the classics right there. I don't know how old Elliot was, too young to remember, but that's one of the first movies I think we took him to as a, he was young. Oh, Bug's Life, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it just so happens that tonight is the start of our kids cruise. Kids Crusade theme this year is Toy Story. And so I thought, how better to kick this off than one of the Toy Story, one of the classic Toy Story songs. You know, Buzz and Woody, they understood and understand the importance of friendship. Two of the most popular TV shows in syndication right now are Seinfeld and Friends. Why is that so? Well, they were well-written shows. They're funny, great cast, but maybe most importantly, they revolve around the friendships of a small group of people. I wonder, can you guess two of the most popular TV shows of the 50s and 60s? Mm, I Love Lucy is one, and of course my favorite, The Andy Griffith Show. And they have outlasted so many others. Both showcase friendship. So today we're going to explore one of the best examples we could ever find in the Bible of true friendship. Today we're going to examine the friendship of David and Jonathan. Do you know that Jonathan is first introduced to us immediately following David slaying Goliath? Up to this point, David is just a young shepherd boy. He's sent by his father to bring lunch to his brothers who are out in the field serving in the military. And he sees the giant, he hears the giant, and then David volunteers to fight the giant. I talked about this on Father's Day just a few weeks ago. He said, I'll go, and sure enough, David goes out. You know the story well. He takes his sling and he kills the giant. Know who this kid is. Up to this point, he's had a bit of a conversation with him, even tried to get his armor onto David. But now he's like, who is this guy? So watch, let's pick this up. This is after the fact, after Goliath is dead, after David successfully brings the giant down. 1 Samuel 17, if you have your Bible, let's go to 1 Samuel 17. And the king said, inquire whose son this boy is. And as soon as David returned from striking down the Philistine, Abner took him and he brought him before King Saul with the head of the Philistine still in David's hand. You get this picture? Isn't that something? And Saul says to David, whose son are you, young man? And David answers, I am the son of your servant, Jesse, from Bethlehem. Enter Jonathan. The very next verse, chapter 18. Look at this. As soon as he had finished speaking to King Saul, the soul, the soul, excuse me, the soul of Jonathan, Jonathan is King Saul's son. The soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved David as he loved his own soul. And Saul took David that day and would not let him return to his father's house. And then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as he loved his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself. Watch this, verse number four. Jonathan stripped himself of, of his robe, the robe that was on him, and he gave it to David. And not only that, he gave him his armor, his sword, his bow, and his belt. Father, speak to us today. 
Speak to us today, God, we ask in Jesus' name. There are three covenants made between David and Jonathan. And from these three covenants, we learn three valuable lessons in friendship. How many... Well, we all need a friend. Everybody needs friends. If you want to have a good friend, you should be a good friend. Today, the Lord's going to speak to us about friendships. And we're going to learn a valuable lesson from each of these covenants. So what do we see in the friendship of David and Jonathan? Number one, we see a friendship of love. A friendship of love. Jonathan is on the sideline watching as David defeats the giant. And in that moment, something supernatural happened in him. Do you know that God wants to order your steps to certain individuals so that you can have a connection with them? I believe that with all of my heart. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to order our steps and to lead us to people that God wants to connect us to. David thought he was just bringing lunch to his brothers. Little did he know that not only would he bring down the giant with the help of God, but he would find a soul friend, a lifelong friend that was a soul friend, different than just casual acquaintances. Something supernatural happened as Jonathan watched David defeat Goliath, and God began to knit their souls together. Can you see knitting needles in God's hands? <laughs> it says that he knit their souls together. Wow. God connected them in an unusual way, and in that knitting process, he gave them a love for each other. Let me just make this very clear. Can everybody hear me? Is this mic working? Check one, two. He knit them together and gave them an unusual love for each other, but it wasn't perverse. Some have tried to take their friendship and make it something that it's not and twist it into a perverse man-to-man -man relationship and that is not what happened. I just thought I would make that very clear today. They made a covenant. The first covenant that they made they made because they loved each other in a healthy, godly, man-to-man -man way. There are men in this room I love. I love my son. He still kisses me on the cheek, by the way. I know. Can you believe it? I love Joey like a son. He's not my blood son, but he's real close. Probably the closest thing that anybody could be to my son. That's Joey. There's just people in this room. We are connected. We're connected. And I love you. Right? They made a covenant because they loved each other. Look at verses 3 and 4 again out of uh, chapter 18. Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him like he loved his own soul. Wow. Love the Lord. What's the greatest commandment ever given? Verse 1 of it goes like this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Verse 2 says what? Love your neighbor. How? Uh, like you love yourself. The Bible says he made a covenant with, with David because he loved him like he loved himself. And he's not just saying it with words. He's backing it up. Here's, here's my proof, Jonathan says. 
And he takes off his robe. His bow, his belt, he just everything. This is how much you mean to me. I'm going to lay all of this before you. You know, stripping down as he did really speaks to us today. There are two things I want to highlight right here. It represents submission, first of all. A friendship birthed out of love needs submission. You see, in laying down his royal robe, remember, Jonathan is the king's son. And in fact, he is in line for the throne. In laying down his royal robe, his armor, his sword, his bow, his belt, Jonathan was giving his authority of succession to the Father's throne to David. That's how powerful that was. Jonathan was submitting to the anointing and the calling on David's life. Jonathan was telling David, I don't have to be first. <laughs> I wonder, how are you doing in this area with your friendships? Are you always the dominant friend in the friendship? Or can you submit so your friend can shine? One of my favorite TV shows, well, it is not one of my favorite TV shows, no. It is my favorite TV show. And I know all of the episodes, The Andy Griffith Show, I, I'll watch it again and again and again. I just, I like it. I think it was well written. I love the cast. It's funny. It's still funny. You know what? The Andy Griffith Show, just a little trivia here. What, what's the title of the show? It's called The Andy Griffith. It's his, it's his brainchild. It's his idea. It's his show. But do you know that Andy Griffith never won an Emmy? Don Knotts, Barney Fife, he won five. Andy Griffith was so generous. Even on the show, there is a generosity in that friendship. He's the straight man. He's the setup guy. So Don Knotts can come in and zing everybody and, and make everybody hold their side laughing so hard. Friendship, submitting, letting somebody else shine, letting your friend shine, helping them even. I think David and Jonathan are a great example of this, just submitting to the friendship, some balance there. So be thoughtful and generous in your friendships. Allow your friends to thrive. Allow your friends to shine. Stripping down as he did not only speaks of submission, it speaks of protection. Jonathan laid down his armor and his weapons for David. This indicates, I got your back. I'll protect you. My armor is your armor. My weapons are your weapons. Even in battle, I'm going to follow you, not my father. You know, you will protect your friendship if you will protect your friends. So top, stop talking poorly behind your friends' backs. Or, or better yet, stop listening to others talk poorly behind your friends' backs. It's time we start defending our friends. It's time we start promoting our friends, protecting our friends. That's what we see in David and Jonathan because it's a friendship of love. Not only, however, not only is it a friendship of love, we also see that it is a friendship of loyalty. Let's look at the second covenant between David and Jonathan. We find this in chapter 20, verses 1 through 4. Then David fled from Nioth in Ramah, and he came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my guilt? And what is my sin before your father that he continually seeks my life? And Jonathan says to David, Far from it. You shall not die. Behold, my father does either 
does nothing, either great or small, without telling me, without disclosing it to me. And why should my father hide this from me? He didn't say this, and so it is not so. But David bowed again, saying, Your father knows well that I have found favor in your eyes, and he thinks, Do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. And Jonathan said to David, Whatever you say, I will do it for you. Pick it up again then in chapter 20, verses 16 and 17. And Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord take vengeance on David's enemies. And Jonathan made David swear again by his love for him, for he loved him. David and Jonathan. And this covenant has to do with loyalty. Jonathan's father, remember, he's the king, King Saul. King Saul is trying to kill David. And yet Jonathan remains loyal to David. Very powerful loyalty. I think we could do a lot better in this area concerning our friendships. Loyalty. Staying with our friends when others jump ship. When others turn, we stay. Loyalty. He was loyal. Jonathan was loyal to to David even though it was dangerous. (laughs) In spite of danger, Jonathan says, I'm still with you. Bring that up for me, please. In spite of danger... Jonathan says, I'm still with you. At one point, Jonathan had successfully convinced his father not to kill David. 1 Samuel 19, 4. I I won't bring this up for you, but let me just highlight a little bit of this. Uh, Jonathan, he's speaking well of David to his dad. Ah, Dad, David's a good guy. Don't you remember when he killed Goliath? And so Saul says, you know what? You've got a point there. I think I'll let him live. But it was, it was brief. It was very brief. Saul heeded to the voice of Jonathan. He swore that he wasn't going to kill David. But now Saul has changed his mind. There's a change of heart. And he is aggressively pursuing David, trying to kill him, wanting to kill him. So Jonathan tells David, listen, my dad tells me everything. He confides in me about everything before he does it. And so I know that he's going to tell me what his plans are. And sure enough, Saul confides in Jonathan. He tells him his plan to kill David. What does Jonathan do? Because Jonathan is more loyal to David than even his father, Jonathan goes and he tells David his father's plan. He tells David Saul's intentions. That, folks, is dangerous. That's extremely dangerous. Jonathan is going against the king. It happens to be his father, yes, but it's the king. And it was so dangerous. To go against the king meant certain death going against his family, going against government, putting himself in harm's way so he could remain loyal to David. Not just in spite of danger, but in the face of death. David understood this. David knew that at any moment he could be killed by the king. And he says in verse number 3 of chapter 20, There is but a step between me and death. But not just David's possible death. There was Jonathan's possible death. Again, this was a real risk to Jonathan. A real risk of Jonathan losing his life because he was loyal to David. 
In fact, at one point, his father, King Saul, he threw a spear at Jonathan and he tried to kill him because he was more loyal to David than he was to the king. So how loyal are you to your friends? Again, we could use a lot more loyalty in our friendships. Listen, God is sending us to people. He's sending us to individuals. Let's stay loyal to them. Let's protect them. Let's defend them. Finally, as I close today, we see in David and Jonathan a friendship of longevity. Go with me now to chapter 23 of 1 Samuel. In verse 14, David remained in the strongholds in the wilderness. He was in the hill country of the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day. Get this. But God did not give him into his hand. And David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life. David was in the wilderness of Ziph at Horish, and Jonathan, here he is again, Saul's son, he rose and he went to David at Horish, and he strengthened his hand in God, I love this, and he said to him, do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you, you shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you, Saul, my father, he knows this very well, and the two of them here it is. They made a covenant. This is the third covenant now. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. And David remained at Horish. And Jonathan, he went home. Verse number 14 in chapter 23. It says that Saul sought after David every day. The truth is, Saul pursued David for years now. Years have gone by. And the pursuit is relentless. And now to this point, it's so aggressive that he's pursuing him every day. It's all consuming. Here's Jonathan. See, he's in it for the long haul. Jonathan shows up again. He, he wasn't a fair weather friend. Jonathan remained loyal year after year. And he never stopped helping his friend. He never stopped helping him. The Bible says that he strengthened David. He strengthened his hand. David was living in caves. David is, is living out in the wilderness running from someone who's trying to take his life. Jonathan shows up and he strengthens him. Let me help you. Let me help you. Not only did he not stop helping his friend, intentionally seeking David out in order to help him. Also, I love this aspect. He never stopped speaking good things into him. That's powerful, actually. Do you know how powerful your words are? He never stopped speaking good things. Verse 17. I, I wonder, could you just bring up verse 17 for us? Look what Jonathan said to his friend. He said to him, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel. And just so you know, I'm right there by you. I'll be right there next to you. And my father, Saul, he knows this very well. Look at this. Look what he spoke into him. Leave that up just for a moment. He spoke against fear. It's time that we start speaking into our friends' lives. Too many of our friends are battling. And we just sit on the sidelines and we say nothing. Come on, start speaking into your friend. Start speaking against fear. Telling them, don't fear. You don't have to fear. Don't fear another day. It's powerful. He spoke against 
fear. Also, look at the next part. For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. He spoke against the enemy. Now, it just so happens the enemy was his father. But David's enemy was Saul. And Jonathan spoke against the enemy. We need to start speaking against the enemy in our friends' lives. It's the enemy that's coming in and trying to steal and kill and destroy. And we have to step up and stand up and speak up and tell you the enemy is not going to succeed in your life. He spoke against the enemy. What else did he say? He spoke he spoke to his destiny. Don't fear the hand of the enemy. The over Israel. What do you see in your friend? Start saying it to him. Start declaring to them their destiny and their future. You shall be. That's powerful right there. Start saying things into your friend's lives. Declare what God is going to do. Be pursuing us. We'd all love not to have to hide in the, in the caverns and in the caves and, 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 and hide behind the mountains. But sometimes that's just where we are in life. But I love when somebody comes and they can see the next chapter. You've got to have spirit eyes to see that. And they start saying some things into your spirit. Start speaking over your friend and telling them their destiny. Just so you know, I'm still in it with you. I, I shall be right there next to you. <laughs> I, I just love that. I'm supposed to be the king in line for the throne and he gave it up he vowed to his friend the friendship of longevity the friendship stood the test of time do you know that your friendship is going to be tested our friendships are going to be tested will your friendship stand the test of time Will your friendships stand the attack of the enemy? Are you willing to fight for your friendships? It was a friendship of longevity. David and Jonathan's friendship lasted up until Jonathan's death on the battlefield. Their friendship lasted beyond Jonathan's death, really. That's how powerful this friendship was. Even after Jonathan died, and now, fast forward, David is the king, just as it was, it was prophesied. And David is ruling the kingdom. And one day he starts thinking about his friend. It's getting all sentimental here. Boy, I sure do miss Jonathan. I love that he'd come and find me and he'd encourage me. Is there anybody he calls his assistant? Second Samuel now for this. Chapter 9, I think it is. Verse number 1. Watch this. Bring that up for me, please. Chapter 9, verse 1. 2 Samuel. Don't have it. I'll read it for you. David said this. Watch. Is there, is there still anyone left of the house of Jonathan's sake? So they get busy trying to trace Jonathan's heritage. And they find, interestingly, they track down Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is Jonathan's son, 
and he's lame in both of his feet. And he's brought to the king. He's brought to King David. And in verse number 7 of 2 Samuel chapter 9, David says to Mephibosheth, Do not fear, for I will show kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your father, and you shall eat at my table always. That's some kind of friendship right there. I want you to close your eyes just before we leave this room. Holy Spirit, I want you to show us the people that you have led us to, first of all, that you're connecting us to, and maybe people that you are trying to lead us to, friends. Today we want to pray for our friendships. Pray for the friends. Pray for your friends right now. The Holy Spirit's bringing to your mind one or two people. I'm sure of it. I, I'm confident of it. Pray for them. Pray for that friendship. Your spouse doesn't count. That's a given. That's a given. I'm talking about somebody, lady with lady, men with men, that God is really bringing to your heart and bringing to your mind. Yeah. We pray for our friends today, our friendships, and we pray for our part in it. <laughs> Give us that heart of commitment and generosity with your head still bowed just before we leave I wonder if you have a friendship with Jesus the greatest friend you'll ever find is Jesus Jesus wants to be your friend and if you do not have a friendship with him today but you would like to I want to pray for you and so if that's you, just lift your hand right where you are so I can pray for you. Yes. There comes a, a realization in this moment in our lives where we decide, I'm going to live for God and I'm going to accept the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, which is through Jesus Christ. When we do this, we find a friend like no other. So Father, thank you, Lord, for speaking to us and dealing with the hearts. I pray, Lord, for true repentance to come for a cleansing of sin and a connection. Use us to build your kingdom. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.